Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of MythCast, MythWorks' very own podcast channel. And today we have a very special guest, Ellen. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh yes. Uh, hello everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Ellen, and I'm a writer. I've done some work for Mythopia in the past, and if you've ever been to London Comic Con, uh, you've probably met me already, uh, because I might have been the one who introduced you to uh, some of Mythopia's finest works. Myth works now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so I might have been um, the first person to have introduced you to some of uh, Mythworks's finest works. Awesome. Yeah, just for you guys, if, if you haven't known already, uh, we used to run as Mythopia, uh, but we've recently changed to Mythworks. So apologies if we do uh, mix those up. It's still, it's still early days. Anyway, on with the show. I really wanted you to be on the show today because mm -hmm. you were researching something really special. We recently went uh, on a trip to Slovenia and um, yes. you brought up the, the idea or the history of mm -hmm. Pichichi. And uh, I thought that was just such a cool um, exploration into, into something that I didn't know a lot about. Um, and I thought it would be an exciting thing to, to have you explain it. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, well, first off, what is Pichachi? Um, yes, so first of all, I have to commend you on your pronunciation of the word Pichachi. I think that's half of the victory um, for this very humble Slovenian dish. Um, Pichachi is very reminiscent of a white pizza. So that would be a pizza with no tomato. Um, it's usually just, it usually consists just of uh, pizza dough very thin pizza dough, um, and then cheese, and then spices such as oregano. Um, and then it's served in two different ways. Uh, it's either just a cut while it's flat into square, or if you're a little bit fancy, rhomboid shapes to aid in the delivery of the sauce itself, or it is sliced into these shapes and then placed into what I can only assume was originally meant to be a nacho bowl. And then the four sauces sort of effortlessly hover over it. And that's what really makes pichichi its own dish because it's not just pizza dough. It's not just some kind of garlicky cheesy bread that wants to mimic a pizza. It has the sauces. Usually I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. it's like ketchup, um cheddar cheese like nacho cheese uh salsa and i don't remember there was like this kind of like red sauce mm -hmm. i would say that the most common sauces on pichichi um would be some kind of uh passata so just simple crushed tomatoes with a bit of spice then either a variation of either ketchup or ketchup plus mayo mixed together into something we like to call rosy then we either got tartar sauce or creme fraiche and then the third the kind of the fourth option is a bit more out there it could either be just ketchup if you haven't got enough red on that plate um, it can be a burger sauce as well it can be salsa but I think last time we we had salsa with pichichi we did find that a little bit too sweet didn't we yeah, I, I think I think it's very much a. I don't know. It, it's it's a hit and miss. It depends on on a lot of things because uh, I think we've tried pichichi in, in a number of different places. There was that one place we went to in Radice, which served pichichi with ham, mm -hmm. and I thought that was great. I I think that's that's the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, this is yeah. a lot of opinions here. I'm enjoying this actually. <laughs> so. During lockdown, um, I had a massive craving for pizza gym. And at the time, I was sort of stuck in London. Um, you know, it, it wasn't there wasn't much to do, much to think about. And it's the first time that's actually occurred to me that not everyone has this dish and not everyone eats it. And I was thinking about something, you know, why are pizza gym so local and why are they so unique to where I'm from? Um, and I kind of shelved that question for a while. Until, um, you know, uh, I, I went back to Slovenia after sort of the, the lockdowns and my father took me out to get Pichichi in uh, where he currently lives. And he said to me, um, 
listen, they have this great dish in a nearby pizzeria. And it's like pizza, but it's cut into pieces. <laughs> and they call it pichichi. So they just changed the accent. <laughs> but when I grew up, everyone knew that my hometown, that is Novo Mesto, was the, was, was the original place where this dish was invented. So this is this is a dish that that does have like it wasn't invented like in the last five or ten years. It's, it's a bit older, right? Yes, it it's about twenty five years old. Okay. So that's not. Oh, uh, yes, it's about between twenty five to thirty years old as a dish, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting because I wonder why no one had thought about pairing sort of pizza dough with dipping sauces before. Um. I guess somebody, it's very possible that someone's going to write to us and say, oh, you know, in, in this place, in this part of the world, we do have this and we've had it for like 300 years. And I really want to hear from, from somebody who might have that experience. I've spoken to some Italians about pizza and I think um, they were very surprised that anyone would try to do that to pizza dough. Right. It's definitely uh, <laughs> blasphemy. It's sure. blasphemy. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure like... Uh, it, like a proper Italian, like for me, I mean, I love it. I, I think it's it's amazing. It's right up my alley. I I love the idea of of it being this kind of communal dish because it's sliced into like these smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a great way to get people around a table and and really like talk, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I guess you can do that with pizza too, but like just the larger slice I feel is a little bit more more demanding you know it's like you you want to have a little bit more more time eating it yeah versus say like snacking on a pizza mm. but like you know an italian would look at it and just have a heart attack it it, it it's just like it, it's more it's more akin to like i would say a domino's pizza <gasps> i know it, but that's what that's what it reminds me of it's just not this nice really doughy greasy kind of fun fun food mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the the one thing that um, we kind of have to understand is a difference between sort of a, a, a North Italian or it's like mid-Italian palate um, and a Slovenian palate is that um, kind of Slovenia onwards, people put ketchup on pizza um, mm -hmm. as a as this is something that we do. We, we enhance the flavor with ketchup. So when you go to a pizzeria in Slovenia, you might have that same crust, really thin. It's all made like Neapolitan style, if, if that's what you want. And there's different styles as well. But we do put ketchup on pizza. So when I was in Italy or Malta um, and I'm asking for, for ketchup on my pizza, unaware that this is a crime, <laughs> um, they didn't want to bring it and they were just really angry with me. So the one thing that pizza G has over pizza is that even if you order a very large pizza, um, and you've got a large group of people, there's always this fear with, with the pizza that there, is, there aren't enough slices for everyone. How many slices can I have? Is it a one slicer? Is it a two slicer? You know, will there be leftovers? Are we going to have to talk about it at the end? But with pizza G, it's just bits. You know, mm. just little bits. Anyone can have as much as possible. And it's kind of like a Doctor Who sort of a telephone booth. It just, it just never runs out. It, right. it looks like it's meager, but it's really not. Yeah, they're, they're super filling for sure. Yeah. So I became interested in pizza cheese because after my dad took me to, to this pizzeria and, and kind of pointed out that he believed that this is where pizza cheese originated from, I got a little bit, you know, um, locally patriotic. And, and I said to myself, well, it's impossible. You know, this place is at least 60 kilometers away from where I think um, pizza cheese originated from. And this is in Slovenia. 60 kilometers is actually quite a long distance <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very small country. Yeah. Um, and I took it personally. So um, I realized two things. The first one is no one will have would have ever written about this particular piece of culinary history uh, because they're so ubiquitous to Novo Mesto and everyone just considers them to be some the most normal thing in the world. And secondly, how would I even go about tracking the origins of something that's probably not, uh, it's like a pre-internet uh, sort of dish. And so what I did was I started asking my friends, um, everyone who was over 30, I sort of asked them and I said, listen, the first time I found out about PGG was in around the year 2000, where I was told that there's a new invention, a reinvention of pizza. And I went to a pizzeria um, and there was this great moment of wonder when people who'd already eaten normal pizza 
all of their lives um, would sort of clasp their hands in delight when mm. this towering nacho bowl of pizza bits came out with all of these um, little slices um, and little sauces. So most people I ask were actually from my hometown and they had kind of like similarly similar memories to mine um, in that they said, okay, so the first time I encountered PTG was 2002, 2005, 2006 and so on. Um, and most of them would pinpoint this one pizzeria that was part of the very large Renault factory. Um, and Wait, it, the pizzeria was part of a Renault factory? Yes. So this would be the, basically, it's a pizza adjacent to the Renault factory. Um, and this is where everyone, you know, it's like a treat. Maybe you bring in your lunch like four, three or four days a week. And then one day you treat yourself and you go there, let's okay. say on a Friday. Because this pizzeria was, had no choice but to be good. Because people would go there their whole careers, right? So wow. the moment they started working in the factory, from the moment they, they retired, a lot of them will have the memory of this pizzeria being there. Um, right, right. So it, it really needed to be good. And everyone knew that PGG were served in this place. So everyone sort of had it in the, their heads that this is where PGG originated from. Okay. What's, um, the, what's the name of this place? Does it have a name? Totalka. Totalka. Yeah. So it means like, I don't know, just, just kind of translate, it translates into the total pizza, you know, total, okay. total pizzeria. And so... There were a couple of outliers in terms of answers. Somebody pinpointed the origin story of PTG completely anecdotally to a town halfway between where my dad lives and where I'm from. So this felt to me like an acceptable compromise. Um, and after a couple more inquiries where friends from my high school and friends from my childhood friends would say that they know exactly how far this dish had spread Mm -hmm. by the fact that when they went out to university in the same country and they would move 70, 80 kilometers out of town, they would call up local pizzerias and they would have no idea what PGG were. So, you know, one okay. of my friends one time was just crying on the phone because the pizzeria wouldn't deliver this pizza to her. So it's very strange that it had never spread to the capital and it's sort of, mm -hmm. you know, Slovenia is shaped like a chicken, this must be mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. Um the the PGG sort of originate in like one of the running legs and it right. never goes beyond kind of the breast fillet part of the <laughs> chicken so that's where it sort of stayed and just for our listeners slovenia is very is very forested and it's a very green country so as you're going through these towns and and cities it's very uh mountainous you're going through valleys with lots of rivers and uh, streams. So this is this is the birthplace of the of the Pichichi, and um, it's quite a surprising place mm -hmm. to to find one of these kind of fast food inventions, in my opinion, because you, you'd think like it would be something from the from the capital or from a big city, um, but it it actually came about kind of in more rural environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think you once compared Slovenia to like a, a game map. Kind yeah, of. <laughs> it's it's crazy because it's it's just so small, but there's all these like really prominent landmarks, and it's just kind of like very condensed and um, full of full of elements and material. So it's it's a cool place to visit. Yes, thank you. You're really selling it. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so sort of my journey kind of stopped after all of the. Uh, answers became quite cyclical everyone said totalka pizzeria circa 2000 so i was always like yeah that that checks out but no one could tell me anything about how they came to be and my friends were starting to get really upset because every time i would meet them and i would meet a friend that i hadn't seen for a while the first thing i would say is like listen we need to talk about something very serious do you know what was the first memory you have of pichichi and if you know anything about their origin and it was just something that I kept doing and to everyone's chagrin. And, um, but I've kind of had to abandon my search because literally nobody uh, knew anything new. No, nobody could contribute anything new to my research. So, of course, um, I kind of did this a little bit in reverse because I didn't want the internet to inform my expectations. So I did my internet research 
after I did my, uh, you know, on on the ground sort of research. Okay. And I did Google PTG just to find some photos to show to people because sometimes when I ask people who were not from my hometown, they, of course, had no idea what I was talking about. Um, and I realized that there were very few photos of PTG, a couple of homemade recipes, and then nothing really uh, about what they were. There was, however, one blog post from 2014 that was sort of a little ode to Pichichi. Mm -hmm. And it was from a, a blogger who said that he knows the origin story of Pichichi. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that there's, a, there's this one like thread that one you can thread. like kind of yeah, pull on. It's almost like a, like a This American Life investigation, right? It's very true. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going for. And the great part about this story, which I'll condense, is it's not very, it's not very long, but um, it's quite interesting, is that after it was posted, every single website that references PTG, even to the point of, oh, you know, have you tried this? Or I'm trying to find a recipe for this, would reference this blog post as PTG's origin story. Wow. So this was sort of where the rabbit hole really got stuck really there was just it felt right. like this is where it is and are you ready do you want to know what the yeah origin? okay over the months that you've been you've been kind of exploring this topic i've always wanted to know the source of of the stories behind the pichichi and exactly um i think i think it's great that you've finally unearthed something something tangible about it i've unearthed something for sure so this blogger claims that he has a friend who okay. um <laughs> so, so it's, uh, this, so, <laughs> it's already starting to get sketchy but okay <laughs> that's I, that's I what i said that's what i said okay. um who um was a bit of a uh let's say uh he liked the occasional drink mm -hmm. and um he also liked to hang out in a pizzeria in novo mesto that surprisingly was not referenced as Totalka, but mm -hmm. a far older pizzeria um, that had closed in the mid um, 2010s called El Dorado. Okay, <laughs> I need to, the name, <laughs> you know, El Dorado, like, yes. it's like searching for that lost city. I mean, we were certainly searching for the lost city. Yeah, it felt like that when I read that. Um, and the thing is, I'd never been to El Dorado because when it was still open, I felt like it was too cool for me. No one ever wanted to take me. But it was like a hangout. It was known as the best pizzeria of its time. And then I guess I don't know what happened to it. But um, this guy was drinking one night in the pizzeria and um, he got peckish. Um, and he reached out to his wallet. And at the time, um, the currency in Slovenia was the tolar, not to be mistaken for the dollar. Um, it has a T, uh, but otherwise it's the same. And the a pizza would be like 800 to 1,000. And he only had 500 in his wallet. So, you know, having had a couple of drinks, he turned to the waitress and he said, listen, I don't have enough money for a pizza. So why don't you just throw some bread and some cheese and just serve me that and I'll give you $500. And apparently that's exactly what happened. And they stuck some oregano on it and then this is how it was born. And the next time he would call it Pichichi and people like sort of noticed it and started ordering it. Humble roots. Humble roots. <laughs> so I guess the reason why I find this a little bit sketch is because it's a friend of a friend. I mean, it's right. a friend of somebody that's a blogger. Uh, so we don't know this person's name. It has mm -hmm. a catchphrase. You know, it's like, I don't have money for a pizza. Throw some cheese on a pizza dough and let's have that. And thirdly, I don't know. It's a little bit like it has that sort of a legendary feel. Yeah, definitely. I think as soon as I heard El Dorado, I was like, uh oh. <laughs> but the, El Dorado was real. I can I can vouch for that. Um, okay. A lot of people can, I think. Um, so, and for a long time, I think that was the way that for me that was the that was a dead end because there was nothing beyond that piece of information, and everyone just knew that. Okay, so this is what's going on, you know, this is like ap apocryphal proof. But there was nothing really that would stop other pizzerias around the country from moving the accent 
from PGC to PGG or PGG um, and claiming that they'd actually invented it. Mm -hmm. And for a while, I thought, you know, this battle is lost. Um, there's no way I can currently prove that there's anything else happening there that can be, you know, proven as the origin is this and this and that. So I kind of left it. But then a couple of weeks ago, of course, we were in Slovenia. We had PGG. I asked a couple of people about what PGG were and, you know, all that the whole thing unfolded again. And I think that I wanted to email a couple of friends that I have on my Substack about this whole story. And I googled a couple of pictures to show them PGG. And suddenly, one of the really good photos had a link under it to a very reputable publication in Slovenia. And it was like, PGG, a, a, a delicacy from Novo Mesto, you must have them. And I clicked it. And I don't think I was ready because I think um, that link from a very reputable Slovenian publication, kind of like the, uh, I don't know, the New York Times mm -hmm. um, of Slovenian journalism, um, was interviewing the head chef of the former El Dorado. Okay, we're back at El Dorado. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's good. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. So this is what really caught my attention because, you know, I think even in, in any kind of, um, I call it like an urban legend, would have a grain of truth. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, you know, there were some blog posts that were kind of saying, oh, you know, El Dorado might have invented the PTG, but Totalka perfected them. Okay. So there was this kind of discourse happening and I was always like, yeah, but how do you know? And know. But the basically there was a food journalist in Slovenia who now claimed with total authority that they were going to reveal the origin story of Pichichi. And this is how it was. So um, the chef's name was Rado Fink and um, he opened, uh, I think, Pizzeria El Dorado in the 90s. And mm -hmm. he was very good at it. He was very good at making pizzas. So after a couple of years in the business, he decided to invest in new pizza ovens, like uh, kind of like, uh, you know, those, those big furnace -y things. Um, right. the, the ones with, with the wood, right? The ones that with you the wood. Put in? Okay. Exactly. And when they came, um, obviously this was a new piece of equipment. So according to him, they um, decided not to just start using them, but to kind of test them out a little bit and see like how quickly the dough bakes and whatnot. So what they did was they rolled out some pizza dough and they just added some basics on it because they were really concerned about how the cheese would work and whether the oregano would burn or something like that. Right, they were just testing it out. They were just testing it out, yeah. So they were making different variants of putting stuff on like some of them might have just you know just one thing on or just a couple and then to make sure that they weren't just wasting ingredients they gave whatever came out of the oven to the guests sitting at the bar was this already with the condiments or was it just like the this cut was pizza? just the cut up yeah okay and when the people said they really enjoyed it and they, if they could have some more then he started kind of thinking and said okay well let's put something this is clearly a bit dry let's put something you know more moist next to it and the original pgg were simply pizza dough oregano and cheese and they were served with a homemade burger sauce that contained wow. only ketchup mayo mustard and maybe spices is that the red sauce that we usually get with the pizza cheese? I think a lot of the time that would be it. I don't know how much mustard it mm -hmm. has because the rosy usually tastes just of like, it tastes of ketchup and mayo more right, than anything right. else. But I think that's the original mm -hmm. sauce that was served with them. And um, so this is now the more refined, kind of the more official version of where Pichichi came from. And I kind of had to take a, you know, a deep breath after I read that because it was kind of like, oh, okay, so... The origin is similar to the other story. It's just kind of like from the other side of the bar table. It's that makes from sense. the other side of the bar table. Exactly. Yeah. So it kind of, it just gives some credence to the fact that, oh, maybe, you know, there's like a small chance um, mm -hmm. that there was a slightly inebriated man at the bar 
right. who was like, oh, you know what? I invented it because I was there <laughs> when they first served it. Right. So. I love that. I, I love like how, you know, these stories kind of have their own, their own little threads and, and side stories. And there's a, there's a bit of like, you know, hearsay and an undercurrent of ambiguity. Kind of reminds me of like the the Caesar salad story, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like it comes from this one place, but like a bunch of different people uh, claim that they were the creator of the Caesar salad. So you're not 100% sure exactly, exactly who's telling the truth, but um, there are these kernels of truth in in the story themselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think the, the last thing that I think uh, Chef Fink wants to leave us with is something that you've touched upon before. It's saying, I'm going to quote him here. The original form of the dish with an interesting name. So I don't know who named it. Uh, let me see if he says that. Um, no, he doesn't. He doesn't say. Um, Travelled around Dolenska and experienced many variations. In some places, bacon, leeks, ham, oregano, salami, minced meat, grilled chicken, zucchini, pepperoni, hot dogs, corn, and so on were added to the cheese. But it is not pizza anymore. It is not pichichi anymore. It's just pizza without tomato sauce. <laughs> so he's a bit of a purist in that sense. So when you say, oh, I love that they added ham, mm -hmm. that is a very contentious topic, I think, in the pichichi community. Right. That's already that's already a variation of the yeah, original. Exactly. Okay. I see. Oh, very cool. Well, Ellen, thank you so much for, for sharing that, that amazing investigative story. No, thank you. Um, and I hope the listeners really enjoyed learning about this unique Slovenian uh, dish. What other dishes are you going to explore in the future? There are a couple of different things that I haven't been able to kind of pinpoint yet. Um, my biggest question right now is how come Slovenians learned how to use very aromatic herbs to make very sweet desserts, such as the, the putica with the, yeah. uh, the pechtran. So they have a very interesting sense of dessert making. So I'm quite okay. keen on exploring that a little bit more. Oh, that would be interesting as well. Yeah. Like the, like the chocolate with the herbs on top. Yes. That's a very unique, uh, flavor. I've never had something like that before so well that would be cool that would be cool well thank you again ellen for for sharing that amazing kernel of history thank and you. thank you listeners for joining us on this amazing mythcast episode a little bit of news so we are running a expansion for the wild sea wild sea storm and route in fact uh, ellen is going to be participating in in its completion mm -hmm. uh, so do check it out on kickstarter we'll we'll add a link one last thank you to all the patreon backers that we have on mythworks patreon you guys are super amazing and thank you for your support we hope you enjoyed this episode and hopefully we'll see you on the next one <laughs>